hikayemizdeki karakter D'Angelo, onu bıraktığımız o karanlık mağarada kendini modern insanın en büyük sorunlarıyla hesaplaşırken buluverdi. Katillerden değil de kurbanlardan nefret ettiğini fark etti. Çok ağır bir yük bu. Biz hangi ara güçlülerin haklı olduğuna inanmaya başladık? We rely on our biases to help us sort through the problems of everyday life. They save us from wasting time, but they also can get in the way of our conscience. People always jump to conclusions about people or things that they don't understand. It's just the way things are. They see the world in their own image and they shun anything that threatens that mirage. And that's why prejudices exist. Everybody bottles their own conscience though. I don't know. I mean, take this next homicide case, for example. We gotten so used to open and shut cases that we expected them all to be simple. Instead of using our minds to think, we relied on our biases to set the parameters for how we dealt with the case. But we must correct that flaws, right? There isn't another option. I mean, these prejudices, they divide us, they destroy our humanity. Well, I don't know about that, but I almost lost my job because of it. It was two years ago. We had security footage of another homicide. He was arguing with someone who was just outside the video frame. It was clear that it was an unplanned action. The homicide, I mean. He was shot after arguing with his killer. It was late at night and there was no one around. No one saw the killer. The man died in front of the security camp. A patrolman found the man on the street, called an ambulance. But by the time he got there, it was too late. Okay, but how did you almost lose your job, though? Jamal was a college student in Brooklyn. He was Muslim, and after a quick search, I discovered that the mosque he attended was mentioned for supporting some jihadist ideals in the past. They even used it as a meeting place for followers to discuss their agenda. Look, probably there were no longer jihadists at the mosque. I didn't care. I had a one-track mind. I had chalked it up to an inside job, you know, Jamal being killed by his own peers. And I should have done some actual detective work. You know, if I had analyzed the security video footage, I might have seen something. I assumed Jamal was killed by a professional, but I was wrong. Look, I was too absorbed in my own racial disparities. I forgot myself for a moment. I didn't do my job, and it led the entire investigation astray. I questioned everyone in the mosque. I questioned Jamal's friends, his family, his co-workers, everyone he knew. And all that questioning led to nothing. And while you may think it's okay for a detective to question his family and friends, I actually had the gall to accuse them of terrorism. Yeah, I was rude. I was cruel. I took their tragedy and I flipped it on them until one day I found out that his sister had tried to commit suicide. Yeah, she was being harassed at her school by her friends and I was part of that. That family just lost their son. And because of our combined ignorance and maliciousness, they almost lost another child.
Look, why don't we take a break? I can see that this is getting to you. Aren't you Muslim? Yeah, yeah, I am. What the? The homeless old guy, right? Oldest. And then the vice president of sanitation, strongest. The transgender, emotion. What's the... that emotion? Oh, the murder took place in front of the club, emotion. What about Jemai's murder? The police commissioner and the deputy mayor were at the hospital. They were apologizing profusely to Jamal's family for my behavior. Chief Sapolsky was extremely upset with me because once again, the killer had turned herself in. So you took care of everything, right? <laughs> I mean, uh... You don't listen, do you? Let me tell you something. Those little antics of yours have put us in a very tenuous situation. Those people out there are decent, hardworking, tax-paying citizens. And if they decide to sue us, this department, this whole city, will lose massive amounts of money, and you can kiss your retirement goodbye. So what I need you to do is go out there, get on your knees, and beg if you have to. Become a Muslim, for God's sakes, but don't let them sue us. All right? Can you do that? As you can imagine, I was really upset. Not because my career was on the line, but because of what I'd done. Sapolsky and I were together at the Academy, and he was always behind me. Do you know what I mean? Who was the killer? You said herself. Why did she kill Javai? You know, we need to start thinking about a way to get out of here. Do you think you can make it through that air shaft? Are you gonna tell me what happened next? Crime of passion. A rich woman from an aristocratic family fell in love with a Muslim university boy. Muslim boy also loves a rich girl. But life has a way of sorting out our differences. You know, Jamal started to worry about his future. So he tried to find a way to separate without hurting the girl that he loved. How can you think that I don't love you? I love you with all of my heart. But how could this possibly end well? Our parents, they won't accept this. I know they won't. What, my parents are the problem now? Well, what about your parents, Jamal? They're not happy either. Okay, listen, we love each other. We can make this work. We can figure out our problems. No, we can't. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Jamal. No, I heard, I know. How could you? Don. Don, put the gun down. Don, stop! <laughs> Jamal decided to marry someone else. Someone that his family approved of. He was right. You know? In the end, our prejudice always wins. And lovers are always parted. Fear wins, Baruch. So, what was the connection to others? Mankind. Mankind Foundation International. Dawn's father is one of the founders. It's an international charity. Jamal was killed right in front of the building. Ironic, isn't it? A few days later, after I'd been busy harassing Jamal's family over their alleged terrorism, Don walked into the police station. 
she confessed everything. Yaşlı bir adam, sokaklarda yaşadığı için, eski bir suçlu olduğu için nefret edilmeyi hak ediyor mudur? Bir melez, saf ırkları bozduğu için ya da farklı ırklardaki insanlar ten renklerinden ötürü nefret edilmeyi hak ediyor mudur? Cinsel kimliklerimizin, kromozomlarımızın farklı olması suç mudur? Bir Müslüman nefret edilmeyi hak eder mi? Ya da bir Hristiyan, sadece bir dine mensup olduğu için? Bu saydıklarım insanları kötü yapan şeyler midir? Kime göre? Neye göre? Niçin? D'Angelo cinayetleri çözmek için çaba sarf ettikçe, kafa yordukça, bunlar üzerinde düşündükçe kendi ruhunun karanlık taraflarını keşfetmişti. Hak etmediği halde insanlardan nefret etmek. Hatta hak etse bile bir insandan nefret etmenin o insanı öldürmeye eşdeğer olduğunu düşünmeye başlamıştı. İnsan nefret edilmeyi hak etmeyecek kadar zayıf bir varlıktı belki de. Çünkü gözümüzü bile kırpmadan insanlardan nefret ediyoruz. Haklarında çok az şey bildiğimiz halde onları yargılayıp infaz ediyoruz. Bu durumda asıl suç mahalli kendi ruhumuz olmaz mı? <Gülüyor>